I'm going to be talking to Peter Londa, who's the CEO of Tantalus, a Burnaby-based technology company that helps electric utilities modernize their distribution grids. Welcome to the uh, interview, Peter. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Well, I'm really interested because I've interviewed a lot of folks in the U.S. about the issues in the American power grids uh, and the, the, the kind of stuff that your company does comes up all the time, but I haven't in the Canadian context. And my perception is that Canada's actually had pretty good grids. You know, they've been robust, they've been lo low cost, they've been clean. But so we haven't had the pressures on us to change and modernize the way the U.S. has. Would you agree or disagree with that? No, I'd agree. And I'd, and I'd add to that, Canada has the benefit or has had the benefit of very inexpensive power for the most part. That obviously varies depending on where in Canada but the benefit of hydro and the way that was invested in long ago has delivered fairly reliable and inexpensive power. And so when things are kind of cheap, most people don't pay attention to them. Right. Uh, now the problem is, of course, that we're electrifying our economies. Uh, uh, we're supposed to, by 2050, the estimates are we'll need two or three times more power than we, we already have. And that means the grid has to adapt. You specialize in distribution systems. So how you know have we kept up with maintaining and investing in the distribution grids across Canada? Yeah, I well, so I'd, I'd say for for our organization, Tantalus, um, just for context and some perspective, we support 325 electric distribution utilities. Um, when you think of the United States market versus the Canadian market, right? There are over 2,700 distribution utilities in the United States. So it's very, very fragmented where you don't see that in British Columbia or most provinces, Ontario, maybe 60 or 70 local distribution companies. That number may be off a little bit, but more concentrated. Um, while we're based in Burnaby and headquartered in Canada and listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, 99% of our revenue comes from the United States. And what I'd say is the reason for that is that we see a lot of utilities down south, south of the border in the United States, investing and in upgrading and modernizing the distribution grid. In Canada, while there has been some advancements in the distribution grid, and I'm sure some of the large utilities would argue significant dollars have gone into it, you can think about like legacy metering infrastructure across Canada was installed 20 plus years ago for basic billing uh, and some outage management detection. That infrastructure has not been replaced in many circumstances or in many locations across the country. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of investment in generation, a lot of investment in transmission, some investment in the distribution grid, but I, I'd say Canada is behind on the investment in the distribution grid, which is where we all live and work. And when things go wrong in the grid, that's where you and I feel it. Now, I mentioned earlier that we're going to need more power, which means more grid. Uh, but because we need two times more power, it doesn't mean we need two times more grid because we can do a lot more with what we already have if we're smart about it. And I think that's where your company comes in, right? Absolutely. So one, one, I like, I, I like to phrase, um, uh, I like to provide for those, backtrack, I'm sorry, for those who don't follow or um, understand the electric grid other than come home, turn the lights on, expect there to be power. Um, think of think of the, the grid and the amount of power we have um, as if it's a, a supply curve and a demand curve. The supply side of the power industry is, is generation. And the demand side is where we all consume. And when you have adequate supply, then we can demand and consume as much as we want. To your point, when there's forecasts, because of electric vehicles, data centers, advancements in computing, which right through AI, just broader industry, um, and we all electrify, um, all of a sudden our demand profile goes up. And so if supply can't continue to match, you get an imbalance. When there's an imbalance between the supply of power and the demand of power, well, that's when things go bad and that's where we have outages. So the way we think about it and the way we're trying to help utilities address it, certainly, Additional generation, terrific. But generation is expensive, it's timely, it requires permits, it can have environmental impact, and you can't snap your fingers and just all of a sudden double the amount of power that the Canadian government, the Canadian utilities have access to. So what we need to focus on is, is absolutely harness what already is available. And 
we look at that supply demand equation or that every kilowatt and every megawatt that we all consume every minute of every day, every single kilowatt or mil, uh, megawatt that we can either shift, shed, or just be more efficient in using, it's a kilowatt and a megawatt that doesn't have to be generated and doesn't have to be sent down the transmission lines. So let's use an example that's becoming increasingly common, and that is electric vehicles charging in someone's garage. And you hear this all the time, you know, I, uh, EV opponents will say, well, you can only have, you know, three EVs charging, otherwise you'll blow up the transformer in their neighborhood, that kind of thing. But in truth, you can shift when the EV owner charges it from, say, midnight to 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., when there's very little demand on the grid, and that helps the grid operator and it shifts load. And that is the kind of thing that you can help utilities with, correct? And it abs absolutely. And what it also does is it protects the asset, the transformer that the individual you're referencing is concerned about. And we should all be concerned about transformers. You know, in the US and into Canada, the, the transformer fleet, distribution transformer, substation distribution and pole top transformers, a vast majority of that is either at or beyond expected life. And so I, I can personalize that for you. I drive the F-150 Lightning. It's an electric vehicle, large EV. Every time I plug it into the side of my house, I'm effectively doubling the amount of power that I'm consuming. On the one hand, that's great for the utility, more revenue. The problem is, until your, your colleague's comment, that puts pressure on the transformer, which was it's probably about 40 years old across the street from my house. And when that was installed, there was no vision of needing to double the amount of power to my home because of one vehicle. So what we can do is through devices that have um, sensing capability and through the data that we can collect from those devices, we can provide utilities with the necessary command and control to pinpoint when a transformer is stressing potentially because imbalance between supply and demand or because I'm consuming more and stressing that device and simultaneously then sending signal down to EFI, to the EV charger or to a water heater or to some other non-critical load that's thermal in nature and can be controlled. And so reduce the voltage down to the EV charger, turn it off, delay when it's charged. You can start to mitigate that imbalance between the supply and demand of power, as well as simultaneously through power quality data that our organization captures quite well, run that through machine learning and ultimately protect those assets. Peter, one of the things that I'm fascinated about is because, you know, we do half of our journalism is about the energy transition at the global level. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, China and the EU and whatever, uh, what have you. And we talk about big, you know, big categories of technology because it gets really complicated and, and not very profitable for viewers to be talking about, you know, uh, some of the really nerdy technical stuff that you folks deal with. But my yeah, impression, yeah. Yeah, my impression is that there have been, in addition to like EVs and heat pumps, there's so much innovation that's been done in the controls in the sensors, in the ability of the software to do predictive, you know, take that data and, and, and give you useful information or predictive maintenance, that kind of thing. And that is, we don't talk about it much, but that's really, really a big part of the change, isn't it? Absolutely. And arguably, it is the most cost effective and the least risky way of upgrading the distribution grid, given the imbalance that's unfolding between the amount of power that's available and the amount that we're consuming. And so within our organization, part of our core competencies and where we continue to gain market share is the ability to capture and analyze very granular levels of data that tie to power quality, voltage and current, harmonics, waveform, about 17 different parameters. And we're capturing it through very intelligent sensors on a millisecond by millisecond basis. And then through advancements in computing and machine learning, and for us, leveraging artificial intelligence in a prudent way, we can start to see what's driving and not when anomalies happen or unfold in that data. We can then understand, start to triangulate why those anomalies are happening. And from why, what do we do about it? How do we prioritize? So 
upgrading and modernizing the distribution grid by harnessing the power of data, which we capture from devices already there, right? That is a huge component of the energy transition and starting to plan for, in the first time in 50 years, Canada and the United States, the amount of electricity we consume is actually increasing. So that, 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 that's uh, automating the distribution grid and being, making it more reliable and resilient through sensors that capture data and analyzing that data is a huge component of making progress. And one another fascinating part of this is the extent to which uh, this uh, your, the revolution in the distribution grid mm -hmm. has enabled distributed energy resources. By what we what we mean by like solar panels and and batteries and digital controls in the house that that kind of thing. And until you until that technology that you just described. Uh, was adopted at the distribution level. You know, we've been talking about DERs for like years and years and years and years. And all of a sudden in the last year or two, it's like, pow, everybody wants a rooftop solar. You know, countries like Pakistan are, are just being revolutionized because of what they can do now at your home, at your house level. And I, I would imagine that what you do uh, is help to integrate those increasing resources into the grid. Absolutely. Um, and doing that in a uh, very prudent and um, and and uh, responsible way so that as those types of applications, appliances and resources come online, whether that's at the state level or an individual level who chooses to put rooftop solar on the top of their house, um, how does utility absorb that in the context of the way the grid was designed 100 years ago? which is how it still operates today. Um, and, and how do we help the utility incentivize individuals to embrace those types of distributed energy resources, storage, solar, heat pumps, geothermal, things like that, all of which make IDAS uh, and the grid that much more resilient. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this is actually a kind of an energy revolution that's going on unnoticed because, you know, it's in the utility industry and which is kind of, you know, boring and nerdy and technical as we all agree. Uh, but I grew up, I, I grew up, my dad worked for Manitoba Hydro and so did I for a year after high school and during summers. So I kind of like this stuff, you know, <laughs> it, it takes me back to my childhood. Um, but yeah, I, I, I find the utility industry still a little sexy. So I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah, it's still, I think it's still a really interesting and fascinating place because there's so much going on. Yeah, I think you and I need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's guy <what> that said. <laughs> but uh, but I I can't over uh, overstate this, uh, Peter. Is the the changes that are happening in our house? Like in my house, I now have a heat pump. I now yep. have an electric hot water. All my appliances are electric. All of our yard appliances, like lawnmowers and so on, are electric. I have an elect two electric bikes. The only thing that isn't electric in our lifestyle anymore is our vehicles. And we're just waiting for the features that we want so that, you know, we'll, we'll eventually we'll get those. I think that our house, and we didn't set out to do this because we were green or because we were worried about climate. We did it because it was the most cost effective and best solution there was. And I think that's what's going to drive this rapid change in the kind of thing you're talking about. I, I, I agree. Um, consumers tend to buy based on um, what's most cost effective and or what they find most appealing. And uh, as I'm, I'm alongside with you, um, we are electrifying our house, um, maybe not at the exact same rate, but as items need to be replaced, we find um, better quality, more features and arguably lower cost for devices that are electric in nature, whether that's the lawn equipment, we've got some of those too, uh, the snowmobiler, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the um, snowplower that we use. I wish it would last a little bit longer in a snowstorm, but it's still uh, you know, easy to charge. And, and I'm, where I'm only ahead of you is on the EV, and I'd say I, I drive it because it's a lot of fun to drive. It's fast, and it's smooth, and it's quiet. Um, so I think we all will see electrification as price points come down and consumers have option, the challenge is the utility's got to be prepared for that. And, and 
that's not only the generation side, it has to unfold at the distribution side because that's where we live and that's where we consume. So making that distribution grid as effective and efficient as possible in anticipation of delivering more and more power to individuals like you and me is critical. Peter, this has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you very much for this. Oh, thanks for having me. Pleasure.